Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Post Chalk Walk Streamathon brought to you by Esports Arena. I'm your host, Yeso. Super excited to be here for all of you. Now, if you're new to the show, I do want to let you know that typically every year, Chalk does a 5K walk to raise money at Disneyland for kids and families at Chalk Children's Hospital. But due to COVID-19 and everything going on right now, we had to make the switch to virtual. But we're still excited to bring the show to all of you at home. And us here at Esports Arena are super excited to be hosting it all. Now, to start off the show, I do want to show you a story from one of the Chalk Kids, Jordan Jackson. Hi, I'm Karen and I'm Jordan's mom and this is Jordan. And I'm coming to you from the Esports Arena in Santa Ana. I am a chalk patient that battles sickle cell disease every single day of my life. Sickle cell is when my red blood cells turn into a sickle shape and get stuck together. When this happens, it blocks oxygen from getting to the most important parts of my body, like my lungs and other organs. This creates indescribable pain, and that's why I'm thankful for chalk for keeping me healthy and managing my pain. When I am there, I don't really feel like I'm at the hospital. They make it so fun for me and my siblings. That is so true. Jordan is actually in the hospital a lot. And when she's there, they treat us like family. They don't just care for Jordan, they also care for the entire family, from her siblings to me and her dad. They make sure that we feel safe with the procedures that they're doing with Jordan. And they make sure that her siblings understand what Jordan is going through and that she's gonna be okay. Chalk Walk is one of the most important days of the year for me. Chalk is very important to me and my family. That's right, the Chalk Walk is very important to us as a family. It's so funny because the night before Chalk Walk, she's so excited, she can't even go to sleep. It's because it's so fun and it's, it's all her friends and family and everybody that's a part of her journey that get together and basically walk for the hospital that keeps her healthy and keeps her safe. And I'm so proud to be able to rally up my team and support the hospital that keeps me and kids like me healthy. And this virtual chalk walk was no different. However, my favorite chalk walk was in 2017 when I was chalk walk ambassador. That was a pretty fun, great year, wasn't it, Jordan? Yeah, I never got to be able to get to the front of the line. And that year I was actually speaking on stage. I was speaking to over 14,000 people and was able to start off the walk. That was so fun that year. I remember that. There was a lot of people there, and actually every year there's a lot of people there, right? And that year you were on stage. We had never even seen the stage before, and that year you were actually on the stage. But guess what? I do remember how well Disney did. Do you? Disney always does an amazing job. And that day I was also supported by Financial Partners Credit Union, and so I want to thank them for supporting me and kids like me. That's so true. They joined Jordan and Team Jordan's journey and supported you. We had a huge team that year, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we did. That was fun. I know I'll spend many more nights in the hospital battling sickle cell disease, but I want to thank Chalk for always focusing on the kids' care. And I want to thank you for being able to support Chalk Children's Hospital. I know you all are very excited for this virtual Chalk Walk. And we have a little surprise for you. Click on the link below. That's right, they're gonna click on that link and they're gonna play some Tetris, Jordan? That's right, click on that link below and then you're gonna play some Tetris. And for those of you who could beat Wild Wing score, you'll be entered in to win a Choco Bear, a Ducks Choco Bear, which is really special. And I'm gonna show you how to beat Wild Wing score. That's right, let's see it. Here we go, it's Wild Wing from the Anaheim Ducks versus Jordan I'm Jackson. It's a I close game, it. can Jordan do let's it? Go, and she it. does, she beats Wild Wing and gets the high score. That was a great story from Jordan Jackson. Happy to hear that she is doing well. Now, folks, don't miss out on our Tetris tournament. If you want to get in on the action, make sure to head over to chalkwalk.org slash event day to sign up and get all the details that you need. Tons of goodies up for grabs there, so you're not going to want to miss it. Now, let's see some more eSports excellence from our friends over at the Anaheim Ducks. 
Welcome everybody to another exciting NHL mascot threes game featuring Wild Wing, NJ Devil, and Stinger. In goal pulling up, we have a monkey dude. And here goes the NHL mascots. We have NJ Devil winning the draw at center. A defense, we have the wonderful Stinger. And on right wing, we have Wild Wing. Here's Wild Wing with it in the slot. That puck is poked away. Here goes NJ Devil with it. NJ Devil. Oh, what a nice play behind the net as he curls in the corner. Comes out. Oh, that's off a stick and wide. Here's Wild Wing with it in the left hand corner. Out front the Devils. They score! What a big goal. These guys are already saying see you later as Devils takes one shot, one goal. Good play here by the mascots as they control the zone. A minute 17 time on attack with the other team at zero. This game has just started, but Wild Wing, NJ Devil, and Stinger looking to put the chomp on. one nothing hockey game right out of the gate four minutes in and here's nj devil on the draw big win nj devil wins it back to stinger and who pushes it over to wild wing but it's a little self pass off the right boards here's stinger in the right hand boards curls around shot in a hole it goes over top of the net and stinger flew that one over top here goes Team White. Team White bringing in shot on, and that one's held over on the right-hand side. Good pass by Wild Wing over to Stinger. Stinger has NJ Devil with him, finds him, they score! What a goal! Stinger gets it over to NJ Devil, and they score! Puck one back to Stinger. Here goes Stinger. Good pass there to Wild Wing. Wild Wing comes through. Still holding on to it, but that's offside. We're going to get a face off out over the right hand side. Is easy. You can see the mascots getting very amped up as the puck is one in. And here goes NJ Devil. Get us some of that energy out of him. You can hear Stinger, he's going, he's buzzing on the right-hand side. Puck moved across, and great interception by Wild Wing. Wild Wing, he sees NJ Devil up there, wants more of a flying V. Gets it back to Wild Wing. Wild Wing shot on, that one's off Stinger. Puck flown over to the left-hand side. Here goes Team White. Team White brings it in, curls at the line. Good play by the Monkey Dude with a great save. As these mascots are lying on their goalie monkey, dude, they're happy about that one. You can see that great save, monkey. Face off to the right of them. As we are at 8.40 left in the first period. Puck moved around, shot on, and that one sails over the net. Picked up by Wild Wing behind his net. He's got Stinger going. He hits, oh, Stinger. Oh, he could just about get there just by the tip of the eyebrow. That was icing. And the pass couldn't be made. Face off to the left of Monkey Dude. That's going to be one back team. Like big save, Monkey Dude. And he's going to hold on to that one. Wants to be safe. Face off to the right of Monkey Dude. It looks like Stinger's ready to buzz right out of his seat. There goes Wild Wing. He goes flying up the ice. NJ Devil hits him. Here's Wild Wing. He's tripped. It's on the stick of Stinger now. And we're going to see Wild Wing with a breakaway penalty shot here. Let's see what he has to say. Wild Wing, where are you going to score? Sounds good. Wild Wing comes in. He shoots. Oh, big save. It's, it's okay, Wild Wing. It's okay. You'll get the next one. Face off here to the right of Team White. That one's in the right-hand corner. Good pick off by Wild Wing. He's got Devils with him in front. It's this Wild Wing shoots. He scores! 
Wild Wing happy about that one. Good pressure by all of these mascots and they get another one. Great job here by the NHL mascots featuring Monkey Dude with five minutes left in the first period. Puck in the left hand side. Here it comes into the middle. Great save, Monkey Dude. Team White moving it around, but it's going to be sent all the way down into their zone. But they don't even go for it. Wild Wing picks it up. Stinger, and what a goal! What a goal by Stinger. I got the lights going for him. We got to get it going. Good goal by these boys. He's chomping at the bit and he gets one as it's 4 nothing. as these NHL mascots are phenomenal. Puck moved into the middle now by Team White. They're on the right-hand boards. It looks like one of their players just coming up late. There he is now. He gets it. Monkey Dude with a great save. Monkey Dude throws it out to the right-hand side to NJ Devil. The trust in these guys. Here's Wild Wing with Stinger. Both of them can really fly. What a goal, Wild Wing! Great job, Wild Wing. What a goal. As he comes in, he had Stinger with him. And they make no mistake. Five nothing in this first period. NJ Devil chasing down. Is it going to be six? He spins, tries to put one by. And that does it for the first period. And what a period it was as these mascots pour it on in a Five nothing show out as we see monkey dude dancing and he's got a reason to he's made huge saves in this period but let's talk about the offense from wild wing nj devil and stinger as these three mascots team up to be unbelievable in this game We see a couple of the goals here as there's wild wing goalie comes down beats the goalie flies by and buries as he is definitely ruffling the feathers of the other team in this one. And look at these NHL mascots have scored on five of six of their shots as they have been controlling the game. Just great offense by these guys. Monkey guy or monkey dude holding it down as well with five saves on five shots. So these mascots are gonna continue to keep the goose egg there for monkey dude. And they work well together. It doesn't matter. Gloves on or not, these guys are ready to go. Start off the second period. NJ Devil starts off on the faceoff as usual. He's the mascot starting center. All-star starting center, I might say. Here comes NJ Devil. He's got Wildling on the Wildling down and puts it on. Here comes Team White shot on it. Oh, that one squeaks by. As it trickles in, you see the mascots showing their reactions. Not very happy about that one trickling by. That's all right. I want to come back here from these mascots. As here goes Team White breaking out. Team White over to the right hand side. Good hit there by Wildling. Here we go. Low Monkey Dude with a huge save as he was all alone. 1v1 against Monkey Dude. Monkey Dude with another big save, and it's picked up by NJ Devil, who finds Wild Wing. Wild Wing, he's one on two. Oh, Wild Wing! Get up, I hope you're okay. Because he's feeling that one, he's dazed, and what a save by Monkey Dude! To keep the mascots from going to five to two. NJ Devil trying to make a fancy move, but he's going to end up getting the puck in the corner. It goes right by him. Big hit there by Wild Wing. Wild Wing gets it back. Here's Stinger at the point. Stinger carries it in, tries to find NJ Devil in the slot, but he gets it on the right-hand side. NJ Devil, he's got the moves. He's bumped off the puck. Stinger there to puck support, chops it into the right-hand corner, and Devils gives chase. Devils tries to win that battle that it's brought out by Team White. Here's Stinger forcing the play, poked off in front, and they score! Team White! As it's a 5-2 game now. As that one goes by Monkey Dude. Puck is brought in by Team White. That one sails wide. 
Puck is sent across and down low. Big bump over to the right hand side. Puck is picked up. Brought in and moved across. Monkey Dew with a huge save as Team White tries to tic tac toe, but not on Monkey Dude. Great save as the mascots are loving that. The Breakers have a long way to go to try to get back into this one. Down by three. Face off is one back by Team White, but there's NJ Devil, and we've got a two on one. Wild Wing and Stinger, they fly up the ice. Wild Wing brought in, he shoots. Oh, and that one saved. As Wild Wing trying to pick a corner on that. The setters will glide into the dot. Face off to the left of Team White. Face off is one back. Here comes Team White. Good pick off by Stinger as it's sent over to NJ Devil. NJ Devil walks the line. What a move. Gets it back to Stinger. Stinger shot on. Toe saved by Team White's goaltender. And here goes Stinger chasing back. Great poke by Stinger. As he gets his stinger out and pokes the puck off and away. Here's Team White behind the net. Moved out in front and that one sails all the way back down. And they're going to have to start again. Their goalie comes out for a taste, but it's not going to happen. Puck over on the right-hand side. Big hit. And that one is carried out. Shot all the way up. Intercepted by Team White. And here they come into the zone. Stinger forcing. And look at this defense. And Monkey Dude with a great save. With 2.22 left in the second period. It's 5-2 mascots. As you see Wildling wiping the sweat off his head as that one was closed. Puck is one back. Big save there. Monkey Dude. It's loose in front again. And it trickles wide. Monkey Dude follows. Shot on and they score! 5 3. As you see, a bit of frustration pour out of the mascots. But we believe in these mascots. It's a 5 3 game, one minute left in the second period. These guys are so good. Look at Wild Wing, and he almost picks a corner. That was so close. They're going to have to try it again now with a face-off here to the right of Team White's goalie with 32 seconds left before they get a break. Face-off is one. Look at this face-off play, and it almost gets back to NJ Devil. That one sweeped by Stinger. Good, good win there by, uh, good period. Good period there by your mascots as they are up five to three. We see uh, good hockey here as the shots may not show it, but these mascots are really holding this one down. The great defense by Stinger. You've seen Stinger and Wild Wing fly up the ice a few times. I've seen NJ Devil pitchfork a guy once or twice. And let's see if they can continue to win this hockey game in the third period. A little secret. I know they will. Face off here for period three. NJ Devil facing off starting stud center. Is that one is one? All the way back, I think we saw NJ uh, Devil's tail slide out on that draw. And here he goes burning up the ice. NJ Devil puts on the brakes. It's back to Wild Wing. And oh, we're going to see a 2 on 0 oh here. Monkey Dude, what can he do? Pass across. Monkey Dude with a great save. He throws it out to Wild Wing. Wild Wing starting behind the net. Calls for the flying V, but Stinger's up the ice flying anyways. Here comes Stinger. Stinger behind the net to NJ Devil looking for a play of, uh, or a back behind the net play. Here comes Stinger at the line. He curls. Wild Wing, good puck support as you see Stinger's frustration there. As that one shot wide. Here's Team White. Big bump by NJ Devil trying to get the mascots going again as that one sailed wide. You can see the momentum away from the mascots, but here comes NJ Devil up the ice. NJ Devil, uh, it's, the ice is melting behind him. He's burning so fast. It's put over to Wild Wing, over to Stinger in the middle, and they score! What a goal! What a goal by your mascots, Tic-Tac-Toe. And they love that. Big poke by NJ Devil, and here he goes now. NJ Devil, he one-hand talks, oh, so close, Devil. Nice try. 
Puck over, move to Team White, breaks out of the zone. Stinger's back though. Stinger forcing, and he takes the trip, the big dive. I love it, Stinger. Good play. The puck's brought up. Monkey do with a big save, and the goalie comes out for Team White. Here comes Team White, and Monkey Dude with a great save again. All right, let's see. Uh, we're going to be holding our hats in this one as uh, you can tell Stinger looking very serious as he took the penalty and Monkey Dude makes the save for him. He doesn't have to worry. Monkey Dude's there for him. No goal. Face off to the, oh, look at this. And the goalie's still pulled. Go guys, the goalie's pulled. Here comes NJ Devil, sends it up to Wild Wing. Wild Wing's got an empty net. <laughs> he pushed it a little too far. Wild Wing still chasing in the corner and that's gonna be Team White behind the net. NJ Devil forcing him. They still, they get their goalie back. Team White does the mascots chasing around trying to get that empty net. Good poke there by Wild Wing. We've got six minutes left in the third period. That puck sent all the way around. Met by Wild Wing. Wild Wing sends it around behind the net to Stinger. Stinger hits the cannon. Up to NJ Devil. Oh, his Devil tries to give us a show. And his player just loses it. You can see he's upset about that one. As the puck's gonna be brought down low and we're gonna see a penalty here and another penalty shot. For Team White, NJ Devil taking a tripping penalty. Let's see if Monkey Dude can hold on. Puck brought in Monkey Dude. Oh, and that one goes in. They saved the first one. The second one couldn't be so lucky, folks. And we are going to get a taste of a 6-4 hockey game as these mascots gonna have to hold it down like they do in their respective arenas is that one sent all the way down the ice you see stinger doing the dive is that one sent wide here goes wild wing off to the races wild wing comes out you look at these moves by wild wing like he's flapping through a pond he can't get that one over to stinger and we see a penalty shot coming up now for Stinger. Oh no, it's gonna be NJ Devil. NJ Devil coming in on the right-hand side. Let's see what he's got for us. Goes between, oh, so close, Dev. Good try. As Devil's almost puts it behind the back and in the net. Buck is one in and carried up the right hand side by Team White. Back moved over. Good passing here by Team White, but great hit by Wild Wing as the goalie's pulled. NJ Devil trying to force the puck out and get a free one here. Good bumps by Devil as he keeps forcing the play. Here comes Team White, four on three as they have the goalie pulled. Back shot on, and that is blocked. Here goes Stinger. He's got Devs. He chops it up. It's into the neutral zone. Puck brought over to the right hand side, moved into the middle, and here we go. Stinger, Stinger, he tries to move it ahead to NJ Devil. NJ Devil's got an empty net, he moves to the side, slaps it, he scores! And that's it, Devils make sure he puts the nail in the coffin with that one. 7 4 NHL mascot. Face off is one back by NJ Devil. As the mascots get one more chance. Are they going to do the flying V? No, it's iced all the way down to Wild Wing. Wild Wing gets it on the right-hand side. He's, oh, he's bumped off the puck. And here goes Team White. One last save for Monkey Dude. Big trip by Stinger. And Stinger says, not in my house. Not in my house. And let's see. Number one, Stinger. Taking the big play. Let's see if Monkey Dude can make the save. Here he comes. Puck's brought in by Team White. Jump deep, not on Monkey, dude. Not today. Bye. All right. 
Puck is one back, and that one sailed over the top of the net. And that does it, folks. Your NHL mascots win a big game from N from NJ Devil, from Wild Wing, from Stinger and Monkey Dude. What a fantastic game. These guys are feeling themselves with another big W. Hey everyone, it's DJ JoJo here from the Anaheim Ducks with my good friend o Wildwing. And hey, I hope you're enjoying this incredible Gamers for Chalk event. Now, if you didn't know, our Family Sundays this past season was presented by Chalk. And we actually included our Ducks Gaming presented by McDonald's of Southern California as well. And we had a whole new show this season called the Flying V Experience powered by Cox. And you know what, Wing? I know the season's over, but... I say we bring the experience to them right now. Come on, scan the QR code. Head on over to AnaheimDucks.com slash FlyingVX to play some of these games with us. Come on, let's go. All right, awesome to see our friends over at the Ducks. Not only good with their hockey sticks, but joysticks as well. So super fun to watch that. Now we're going to check out some gamers playing Animal Crossing and visiting some familiar places. What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Post Chalk Walk Streamathon. I'm Connie Kins, and joined by me is Stephanie. Stephanie, what do we have planned for today? So we are going to be visiting some super cool Animal Crossing islands. I think that you guys are really going to like it. Um, it's gorgeous from the pictures that I've seen, so I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> so, what 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 is this island that we're going to? So the island that we're going to is actually modeled after Disneyland. Um, we've got to get our, our Disney fix good. <laughs> there he is, goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so this island was made by a YouTube channel called Cootie Wonderland. And uh, they have my personal favorite ride at Disneyland. Actually, before I talk about it, what's your favorite ride? Ooh, um, I am real big on the roller coasters, to be honest. Honestly, Space Mountain might be my favorite. Okay. Yeah. So my personal favorite. No. Yeah, yeah, you're like, now that we got that now out of the way. Now that we got that yeah. out of the way. No, my, my favorite ride is the Haunted Mansion. Mm. Um, there's a lot of interesting lore attached to it, like just the ride itself. And then on top of that, like the theming, like New Orleans Square, you know, there's a rundown kind of mansion. Like what's going on here? What's this? Yeah. All the stuff even behind the scenes, like all the concepts they had, like there's so much. Oh, this is so cool. The wow. posters. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, wow. That's but, like when you walk in, mm -hmm. like the like two, like you can choose the two different tunnels and then they have like the ride posters on the side. That's cool. Yeah, is there a little hat I can wear? Oh my god. Let's put it on. What is it? Sky egg. Egg. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so, oh, they have the Jungle Cruise, I think, over here. Wow. So it's a little bit more than just the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. So this is supposed to be kind of like the entrance to Disneyland, I guess, with park tickets. That's oh, cute. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, we can't go in without a ticket. Let's grab one. Oh, true. So yeah, we're I gotta going go through in. the turnstile. So this is supposed to be Main Street, I guess. Yeah. Oh my God. This looks really good. This does look really good. We got Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, Disney's yeah, got Starbucks. That. I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even think. Yeah. Wow. So this. Is very cool. Oh, that's supposed to be the Walt Disney statue. That is cute. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, I guess we go left here. Yeah, this I guess is, we have to. This is surprisingly accurate. It really is. Like, oh, we gotta find a way. Okay, I guess we go left from here, huh? Oh yeah, I think we have only to. way, because I guess this would be like Adventureland. <gasps> oh my oh. gosh, it's the Beating Heart Bride. <gasps> wow. It's 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 it's. Is her name Constance? Constance Hatchaway, yeah, that's okay. what it is. I don't know why I blinked on it. That's embarrassing. It said, I've been dying to have you. Oh, that's creepy. Wow. <laughs> that is so creepy. <laughs> wow. Look at that. They got some costumes here. Where, where's that's the so haunted cool. man? Oh my goodness. Oh, this... it's got like the line entrance too. No way. Oh, that's so awesome. That is so sick. And then they have the cafe right next to it to the left. I've eaten there and they have really good soup. They have like Red Bull soups there. Oh, yum. So good. That sounds good. It's like sourdough. It's really good. Ooh. It's like potato soup. But we, we got to get into the real meat and potatoes here. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so creepy. So what part of the ride 
Oh, this is like the beginning with yeah. the changing portraits, and like the, when you're walking. And the night in the hallway. Yeah. Wow. D Disney, if anybody from Disney is watching this, I just want y'all to know, wh whoever made the Haunted Mansion, give that guy a raise. He's doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Wh whoever's right. operating that ride, give him a raise. Give her a raise. <laughs> I don't know who's in charge, but tell them to keep doing them. I love them. <laughs> do you prefer the Haunted Mansion like how it is normally, or do you like it when they change it to Nightmare? Um, I think it's a cool concept. <laughs> I am personally like a huge fan of just, I got my Haunted Mansion sweater on by the way. Oh, this is That's the stretching cute. portrait. Oh yeah, it is. Oh my wow. gosh, with the villager. That with is the different so villagers. cute. That's so cute. Little gargoyles. This room has no windows and no doors. Is that this ride? Except I don't remember. Here. <laughs> yeah, it's that ride. <laughs> um, wow. But yeah, I like the original Haunted Mansion better. I think what they do to it is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that every year they have like a different theme? Uh, oh. So like one year they have like a giant like spider take over the mansion during like the Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I didn't even know that. But on top of that, what they do is every time they like do like a certain theme, they'll leave a little Easter egg in the regular Haunted Mansion. Mm. So there, if you look closely in the attic scene, uh -huh. there's a chance that you'll see uh, a little doll of Sally from Nightmare Before <gasps> Christmas. Oh my gosh. I'll have to like look next time I'm there. It's that's hard so cool. to find because she's like, she's literally like this big. It's like a straight up just like little toy of her. Wow. But it's cool. So oh. this is the seance room with Madame Leota. Yeah. All the instruments. Wow. So I love the flooring. Is. It looks so mystical. This is so cool. Like, shout outs to Cootie or whoever's in charge. I don't know how to address them properly, but Cootie Wonderland. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, awesome job. I know, crazy. It's got everything. The musical instruments, dun, dun, the dun, 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 clocks. Dun, dun, dun. This is so cool. I feel like when I'm on this ride, this is the room I always get stuck in. Like, if the ride stops, like, it's I'm always It's always room. right before you get into the seance room, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I saw a video on why they do that. I know a lot of the time um, there's guests um, who have a bit of a harder time getting on the ride. Oh, uh-huh. See, Lily, so that's periodically why they do that. Like, sometimes I'll go with my grandma. She's going to hop out of her wheelchair and stuff, but... Yeah. <gasps> oh, the dinner party. Oh, this is so cool. This is sick. Oh, I'm jumping up and down with joy. Oh, I will say the one thing I like about when they do the Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion is that this room smells like gingerbread. That is and such I a nice that. touch. Yeah. Um, there's spider webs here. I wonder, Ooh. you know what I would have done just a tad differently? Hmm. Somewhere in this room, if they included a spider, that would have made me happy, like a tarantula. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a funny little thing that happened. Um, so, in the Haunted Mansion, um, I guess there was somebody who accidentally broke a hole somehow. Because the way they do the illusion is they use an effect called the Pepper's Ghost effect, where oh. they use a bunch of mirrors and reflections to make the ghosts, to make them look like, you know, they're dancing and, like, life-size and all that. Yeah. And, um, it's a really well-done effect. Um, let's go in the basement. But, uh, basically, uh, somebody broke a hole somehow. Nobody knows how or where, but... It, w it would have been very expensive to replace the, the glass. Mm -hmm. So what they did instead was they put a little sticker of a spider on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and oh, so, my gosh. And so if you, look, <laughs> if you look on the Haunted Mansion, if you're, like, closer to the left side, you'll be able to see it. That's so funny. Yeah. You're like, we're not going to repair it. There's a spider. <laughs> Where? Oh, no, no, no. I just mean, like. Oh, I thought you ride. saw one. No, no, no. Like, that would have been cool. Like, oh, no. It's like the grave. The grave digger. There's yeah. the dog, oh, dude. That's that so makes cute. me sad, that part on the ride, because he's all like, he's like what is cold this? and like scared. Yeah. <laughs> but this is so cool. It's got the little ghost popping up, too, behind the gravestones. Wow. Disney, if you're watching this, um, we would not say no to a behind the scenes tour of the Haunted Mansion. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> That's hey. my favorite ride. Yeah, if you want to hook us yeah. up, I mean. Oh, man, that would be cool. <laughs> Oh, this is the attic scene. Oh, this is creepy. What is Ooh. that? Oh, it's the actual painting from, from the ride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so, so cool. So there's a painting um, in the ride. And there's it's even here, too. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, there's a painting. There's, like, a bunch of paintings where, like, because what she does is she she's evil. She chops the heads off of her husband. Mm -hmm. Hence why she's named 
Constance Hatchaway. Oh, there she is with the yeah. axe. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh, she stuck up on me. <laughs> Look at that. Ah. They're using like the, the mask from Able Sisters as oh. a head. That's so cool. That is so scary. I'm going to stay on this side so she doesn't hurt me. Yeah. But yeah, that's so cool. It's all spooky and scary. And I love this effect with the projector. They have the accordion player who goes, here comes the bride. Oh, yeah. They have that. I love that effect. And the piano is like going on its own or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Man, I heard that they added some new stuff to the Haunted Mansion. I've been avoiding spoilers, but I'm going to be going to a um, Disney pretty soon. So I'm excited to oh see what they gosh. did. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it'll be super cool. Oh, man. I haven't been to Disney since like I think I went a week before all of the like shutdowns and everything mm -hmm. like that happened and so yeah this is the longest I haven't been to Disney since I moved to California I think wow mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah dang we gotta we gotta go Stephanie we I gotta, know we should we we sports go. arena dude Disney day ESA <laughs> Disney takeover <laughs> <laughs> all right that's cool they gave me a little egg for free on my head Aww. I know, I like it. <laughs> That's sweet of the ghost. <laughs> I wonder if the whole mm -hmm. island is laid out just like Disneyland, because so far yeah. it's been that way. I wonder if we can explore the rest of it. I know parts of it were blocked off. Yeah. Um, which I don't blame them. Oh, it's Pirates of the Caribbean! Yes, Oh, that's dude. cool. It's a cute... Oh. Fire the cannons. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, you can, like, use Nook Miles to go to, like, other islands and, like, see what they have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one didn't have any exotic fish to make bells off of. Fire the cannons, bro. They're done. <laughs> like, this is a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, you wasted my bells, good sir. It just kind of sounds like the I straight music. up thought that was the pirate team, and I was like, how did he do that? Or she, or they, I don't know. But that's so sick. Wow, that was cool. And then this is, I think this is like the Jungle Cruise area. This is. Oh. Wow. wow. I wonder if we'll see the backside of water. Do you think we will? Oh, let's go inside. The backside. Oh my gosh. Oh, Sheldon. <laughs> Maybe if Sheldon was home, we could have. Sheldon, <laughs> you goober, man. We're about to go on and have a good time. Ruined it. Oh my god, Constance. Oh, there you are, Sheldon. Sheldon, <laughs> get in your house, brother. <laughs> I want to go on the jungle cruise. And is this the, I don't know, the tiki room, maybe? Oh, I, don't know. I wonder if it is. Dole Whip's the best. Oh my gosh, I, it might be. It kind of looks tropical-y. This is a parrot in here. It's close enough. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> the bird. Don't they have names? Oh, probably. I don't know what they are. Though. I remember uh, I remember they had a, a talking bird animatronic on the outside that would talk to guests back when like the Tiki Room first opened. Mm -hmm. And it was so popular that everybody in the park would just stop and stand in front of it. And it caused all this congestion. Oh, my God. Um, so nobody could get through <laughs> to Adventureland. So everyone's like, oh, no. So they ended up having to take the bird out. Oh. Um, but, yeah, this is the Tiki Room. There's a bunch of little birds. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, and then it says on that sign, the Tiki, tiki Juice Bar. Oh, d oh, it's Dole Whip. Yeah, we the Dole Whip. <laughs> that is such a nice yeah. touch. I love the Dole Whip. Oh, me too. And they added that new restaurant Did that they? has like the different flavor, like the different flavors of Dole Whip. So you can oh. get like raspberry and other stuff like that now. That's cool. It's pretty good. I wonder if we can go down. I think we already did. Can we go up then? That's the question. Um, I guess I don't not. Know. We could try going left and then up. Yeah. We, I know we can't go right and up. But if we go left, perhaps. It's kind of cool how they did like forced, like perspective kind of, where oh. you can only go to the parts that, like, fit their island vibe. Yeah, I think they did a really neat job. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. That made me happy. Yeah, that was awesome. Wow, the Tiki Room, Jungle Cruise, Pirates on a Mansion. Some of my favorite rides. Yeah, I feel like that's that half of the park I spend probably the most time on. <laughs> 
My only complaint, where's Indiana Jones, bro? I know. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hard. <laughs> that ride is so cool, like the queue. Indiana Jones? Yeah. yeah like it's you're, awesome. You're straight up in a temple. Yeah. And all the little, like, fun interactive stuff they have that you can do. Yeah. They there. had to They had to take some of it out. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was one portion that had, like, a ceiling that would lower if you stepped on a switch, but they had yeah. to take it out just due to safety. Yeah. But that would have been cool, huh? Yeah, I remember that. I think, like, a while ago, probably, like, ten years ago, they had that, and I remember seeing it. Really? I think Man. so. I don't know. Okay. That's crazy. And they also have the big rock where if you, like, shake the rope, the oh, guy, yeah. like, yells underneath the thing. <laughs> I know there's one thing where, um, I think there's, like, a loose piece of, like, wood or something, mm -hmm. and if you push it, it, like, breaks things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. Well, they gotta make that line queue fun, because that ride's always a long wait. <laughs> that, that ride is so cool, man. Yeah. It's worth it. Um, I guess that'll do it for that island. Yeah. That's everything, so... Wow. That was super cool. That was awesome. Let's go home. Okay. So, that'll do it. Unless you have any other islands you want to check out. No, I think those were the top tier. Top best ones tier. that we've seen. S tier. Yeah. A plus. 100 <laughs> out of 100. Wow. 10 horse runs out of 10 <laughs> horse runs. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's going on. That, that's going in the edit. That's yeah. going in the edit. So that'll do it from us. Stephanie, what'd you think of all the islands we saw? I thought they were fantastic. Honestly, so creative, like amazing. What did you think? I thought they were like really cool. I, it kind of made me feel like I was at Disneyland a little bit. Yeah. And on top of that, it kind of brought back some memories, got us to kind of talk a little bit about some of our favorite things about Disney. Mm -hmm. So. That was really cool, you know, both like both in terms of like the movies, the media and like the parks themselves. So shout out to the people who made them. Uh, we'll include their stuff. I think we have them on stream. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it from us. And guys, keep on enjoying the post chalk walk streamathon. We'll see you soon. Yeah, bye. Hey, everyone, it's Mike Mulligan again. And I'm back to welcome you to the Virtual Chalk Walk Streamathon Trivia Game. We invite you to play along at home as we present a wacky trivia competition themed around Chalk's hometown of Orange County. In between segments, we're asking fun-filled questions, and you'll be given 10 seconds to hopefully select the right answer. Your answers will be tracked and your scores tabulated with each question. The player with the most points by the end of the game will be awarded a really nifty prize. In the case of a tie, a random winner will be chosen between the top participants. All questions will be answered through the quizkit.io Twitch plugin. Questions appear right down here, and remember, you only have 10 seconds, so choose wisely. We're assuming you two are big fans of Chalk and Orange County, so get those fingers ready for the right answer. Here's the question. One of Orange County's most fun annual events turns 100 in 2024. Is it A, Pageant of the Masters, B, Newport Beach Film Festival, C, Anaheim Halloween Festival Parade? That sounds like a frightfully good time. Or D, After Christmas Sale at South Coast Plaza. Hmm, I had to guess. I would say it was one of the answers listed. Let's see if we can get it before time runs out. Three, two, one. All right, if you answered C, you scared up the right answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, it's the Anaheim Halloween Festival and Parade that will be turning 100 in 2024. And it's looking better and better every year. With so much incredible local talent, everyone comes together to celebrate the history and most importantly, the community. It's no wonder it's one of the most anticipated times of the year. All right, stay tuned for our next round of questions for your chance to win that big prize. See you back here in just a few. Awesome to see some fun over there in Animal Crossing. But now I want to introduce you to something new, and it is Chalk's first eSports tournament. It's the Champions League. It's going to include competition in games from Call of Duty, Tetris, to even Rocket League, and chess. If you want to register, head over to rally.gg slash chalk right now as registration is open. And 
if you participate in today's Tetris tournament, the top five players will auto qualify for the Champions League. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. I also do want to mention a silent auction going on over at auction.gamersforchalk.org where we've got all kinds of awesome goodies like these Gamer for Chalk jerseys, some custom chalk vans, and even some awesome Warcraft 3 statues from Frank Pierce's personal collection. So make sure to head over there as well. Now let's head over to Seacrest Studios to see what they have in store for the Chalk Walk. Hey everyone, it is Josh here hanging out at Chalk Hospital inside of Seacrest Studios. Happy to be joining you virtually for this year's Chalk Walk. We thought we'd pop in really quickly and teach you a fun little craft. And believe it or not, all you will need is this simple sheet of paper. So let's head on into the studio and I'll teach you what we're making today. So go ahead, this would be a good time to grab that sheet of paper. We'll get set up in our craft center and show you all the things you need to do to make this simple piece of paper into a fun airplane that looks just like this. Believe it or not, this airplane also comes back to you. So let's go check it out. I wanted to pop in really quickly and teach you to do something really simple and fun, how to make a boomerang airplane. Yes, you heard that correctly. A paper airplane that when thrown at the correct angle will return back to you. Uh, so very, very simple. All you will need is a sheet of printer paper that can be found almost anywhere. All right guys, so the first step is you're gonna wanna orient the paper long ways or vertical right in front of you and very simple all you need to do is to make something in origami we call a valley fold where you're going to fold it over like this and kind of make like a hot dog the opposite of a valley fold is a mountain where you're going to be popping the paper up but you're going to lay it flat and make a hot dog fold very simple and uh, the trick to making a really good paper airplane is really creasing that down with your nails and pushing really hard and getting a nice sharp edge after you make that fold you're going to need to open it back up and then you're going to take the top left corner. I'm left-handed so I'll start there but we're going to be doing both sides and you're going to fold that right down to the center and you're going to want to align all of those lines as perfectly and evenly as you can. I'm going to take my time here. You can kind of push lightly, get the paper in the right spot and then once again hold that corner, push outwards and that'll kind of keep it in place. Make a light fold and then you can go over it again with your nail to get a nice strong fold on that. Then you're going to want to repeat that step exactly the same on the other side. Again, lining that up as perfectly and symmetrically as possible. And it's going to create this little arrow looking shape. So that's it, three folds thus far and believe it or not we're getting quite close to making that awesome boomerang paper airplane that we talked about earlier. So after you have that, you're going to want to take the top point of your paper airplane and fold it all the way down to the end of this part of the paper, right on the very edge. Line that point up right to the very tip. And again, hold down and push outwards. Get that light fold going. And then once again, use that nail and get a nice sharp crease going cool thing now is it kind of looks like an envelope, something you would mail. Not too many people use the mail anymore, but you know, if you've ever gotten mail, it's quite fun. You're at the envelope stage. So next step is you're going to want to take that envelope, unfold it, and you can see a line has been created there. You're going to want to get this line folded to that line. A little bit tricky on this part, so I'll kind of take my time. But again, I want this line to match up with this line. So take that over, fold it, and you can see right there, I'm lining that up. Don't worry, I'll go over this step again. You can see these corners need to match up right there with that line. Hold down in the center, use those nails to get that awesome crease, and you should have about a finger width right here, kind of folded there. So I was here, I took this top line and I folded it down to that second line that you made earlier. There you are. 
that just shortens it and gives it a nice strong nose. Next step, take that upper corner, kind of what we did near the beginning, and fold that over right to the center. And you will have a little triangle poking out, and that is exactly what you want. Start with a light fold, and then go ahead and use that nail and get a nice sharp crease. Same exact step on the other side. Top corner, right to the center. Taking your time, trying to get all of those folds nice and straight and even. If you make a little mistake, do not worry. You'll still be having fun, and you'll have a fun paper airplane when you're done. Once again, use that nail and get that nice sharp crease. You have a little triangle poking out, and that is exactly what you want. You're going to want to take that triangle and fold it up. Just kind of get underneath there. Oops, a little tricky on this part. And fold that triangle up. So that's what you should have. We're almost there. We've got about three folds left, so stick with me. You're almost there. You're going to want to take your paper airplane at this point, pick it up, and fold it into half. And get those creases nice and sharp. So you should have that little triangle right there on the bottom. Guys, it is time to make our wings for this awesome paper airplane. I'm just going over, getting all my folds nice and sharp and ready. Now we are going to make the wings. We're going to take this top layer, and we're going to fold this right down to the top of that triangle. And that's going to make your wing shape. So I'll take my time once again. This top triangle, it's going to kind of fold over right to here, to that little line. I'll kind of do it this way so you guys can see it a little bit better. So you can see I had that pretty close, almost right on top of that. It's OK if it's just a tiny bit off. Go ahead, use those nails and make that sharp fold. An easy way to make a very symmetrical wing on the other side is to take it, flip it over, and just match that. Match this to that one. And you should have nearly identical folds for your wings. Use that nail, really get in there and make a nice sharp crease. This is where you should be now. We're almost there. All we need to do is fold these wings up. So we're going to want to create our little side wings. So take that top layer and fold this up right here. Flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. And now we can take our paper airplane from the middle, open it up, and kind of want to bend up right here. That's going to allow the air to get under there and get a nice flight. Take these little side wings, fold those out. And the last step is to give a little pinch on the back with your finger, and that creates a nice elevator that we call in aviation to give your airplane the proper flight. All right, let's check this out. Hey, everyone, let's give this a toss and see how well it flies. Nice, gentle toss at a slight angle. There you go. I hope you have fun tossing your boomerang paper airplane. Wishing you a happy chalk walk from here at Seacrest Studios. Hey everybody, I'm Michael Mulligan, and I am happy to be your virtual Chalk Walk Streamathon Trivia Man with more questions than answers. We invite you to play along as we present a wacky trivia competition themed around Chalk's hometown of Orange County. In between segments, we'll be asking fun-filled questions, and you'll be given 10 seconds to hopefully select the right answer. Your questions will be tracked and your scores tabulated with each question. The player with the most points at the end of the game will be awarded a really nifty prize. In the case of a tie, a random winner will be chosen between the top participants. All questions will be answered through the quizkit.io Twitch plugin. 
Questions will appear right down here, and you'll remember that you have only 10 seconds to answer, so choose wisely. We're assuming you too are big fans of chalk in Orange County, so get those fingers ready to select the right answer. Okay, here we go. Now, the questions appear right down here. Now this question has the scent of being a really hard one. Remember, you're squeezed for time with only 10 seconds to answer. Now, who or what is Orange County named after? All right, answer number one, the founder's favorite color was orange. Number two, the orange groves. Number three, the color of the sunset. And number four, you know, uh, scurvy and all. All right, now, if you answer D, scurvy, well, you should probably see your doctor. But if you answered B, we have a winner. Of course it's the Orange Groves. Well, I hope there was nothing that I said that gave it away. Okay, please stay tuned for our next round of questions because we know you really want to win that prize. See you back here in a few. Love to see what Seacrest Studios is doing and big thank you over to them for their support here of the Chalk Walk. Do we want to give you guys one final reminder? Head over to auction.gamersforchalk.org to get in on the silent auction. You're not going to want to miss out on all the awesome prizes we have over there. Now, do you want to tell you a little bit about what eSports Arena is doing with Series E? It is a professional Apex Legends open circuit that absolutely anyone can join. All the players are drafted into teams, compete weekly for points and prize money, and even get paid a monthly salary. If anybody, maybe you and your friends, want to get in on the action, you can head over to matchreno.com slash ESA to sign up and try and be a future Series E pro. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's check out what Series E is all about. Looking for that first step into your eSports career? eSports Arena has created Series E, a semi-professional league for you to compete in, sponsored by brands you already know. How do you become a player? 1. Sign up for our qualifiers. 2. Compete weekly during the qualifying season. 3. Be one of the top teams at the end of the season to become a sponsored player. Each sponsored Series E player will get paid monthly playing your favorite games. Compete weekly to keep your sponsorship. Get sponsor swag and more. Ready to take the first step in your esports career? Compete and sign up today. Esportsarena.com slash series Dash e. Hello, my name is Dana White, and on behalf of Hyundai Motor America, I'd like to wish you all a happy Chalk Walk. We hope to see you next year in person. Hi, Rob Paulson here. What does that mean? Not much, unless you're with the IRS, in which case, call me later. But for those of you who don't care about that, I'm Yakko from Animaniacs. I'm also Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. Narf. I'm Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Don't forget to finish your croissant. I am not one, but two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Raphael from when most of you were very young, and Donatello from a later iteration. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is the Post Chalk Walk Streamathon. What is the Post Chalk Walk Streamathon, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you did. Well, CHOC is an acronym for Children's Hospital of Orange County. And the Streamathon is a charity event with a lot of help, a lot of really important help from companies like the Children's Hospital of Orange County them, them, themselves and Disney, for whom I've worked on more than one occasion. Thank you very much. Happy was placed on earth indeed. But the CHOC Walk is to help children and families in need. And there are, sadly, a lot of us down here who are trying to help people in need. And the Chalk Walk does exactly that. Your support means everything, gamers. And all of us know how incredibly generous you are. You can donate now at the link below. And I can categorically tell you that Brain and I will include you in our next plan to take over the world. Thank you very much. And one more thing. Nerve. Thanks. Hi everybody, it's Mike Mulligan, and I am here to welcome you back to the Virtual Chalk Walk Streamathon Trivia Game. We invite you to play along at home as we present a wacky trivia competition themed around Chalk's hometown of Orange County. 
In between segments, we've been asking fun-filled questions, and you're given 10 seconds to hopefully select the right answer. Your answers will be tracked and your scores tabulated with each question. The player with the most points by the end of our game will be awarded a really nifty prize. In the case of a tie, a random winner will be chosen between the top participants. All questions will be answered through the quizkit.io Twitch plugin. Questions appear right down here. And remember, you only have 10 seconds to answer, so choose wisely. We're assuming you two are big fans of Chalk and Orange County, so get those fingers ready to select the right answer. Here is the question. What exotic animal was common in Orange County in the 1920s? Was it A, ostriches, B, lions, C, yuppies, or D, bears? Alright, I hope everyone has made their selection and ready for a very emoosing answer. If you answered C, well, you must be hanging out in certain buttoned up sections of the OC and carry your preppy handbook everywhere. But nonetheless, it was not what we were looking for this time. However, if you selected A, then you are correct! Ostrich farms were an actual thing in Orange County back in the day! Ostriches! Who knew, right? Okay, please stay tuned for our next round of questions and your chance to win that prize. See you back here in a few. Very cool stuff from us here at Esports Arena with everything going on with Series E. Do want to remind you guys again, the silent auction is going on. Auctions.gamersforchaka.org. Remember, we got these awesome jerseys, custom chalk bands, even those Warcraft 3 statues. And we've also got some art from Kales and Fails, and let's check out how she made some of that sweet stuff. Hi everyone, I'm Kales. Uh, I collect Pokemon cards, and I'm also an artist. I'm coming to you live from Esports Arena to draw some Pokemon for all of you. Um, if you want to take one of my drawings home, you can enter the silent auction at the link below. Without further ado, let's begin. Um, so I started this drawing a little bit earlier when I came in. It's about 28 minutes in to the sketch. Um, I'm just going to start by doing a little time-lapse replay of my process. That way you can see where I started from and where I'm at now. Um, so I'm just going to do this really quick. Sorry, it's hard to control this. So I, oh, <laughs> I have a weird process. I don't really start with shapes, I just kind of sketch. Um, until I get something that I think looks good. And I'm drawing a Teddy Ursa today, so this is um, the cute little bear Pokemon. Doing a cute little pose. And why do you select a bear? I selected a bear because the mascot for Chalk is a bear, and I thought that this Teddy Ursa looked really similar and really cute. Yeah, I think so too. That's <laughs> super cool. So, um, let me go ahead and get into the rest of the process. I always start with sketching out first, and then um, the beauty of working on a digital art tablet is that from there, I can add on a bunch of layers and adjust things how I want. Um, so for this, I'm going to decrease the opacity until the point where it's like kind of visible, and then I'm gonna start working on my line art. And I like to make thicker lines on my drawings just because I think that makes them really pop out. Um, so I guess I'll just go into that. Ooh. My process is a lot of drawing and then undoing and then drawing again until I get it right. I don't draw a lot of bears, so bear ears are a little hard for me. I think that looks right. That looks good. <laughs> um, the cool thing about working on an iPad with Procreate is that they have a lot of shortcuts that make it easier to make shapes that you want. So like I can lock in this kind of round oval or I can make it an exact circle. 
but I kind of want the oval shape just because Teddy Ursus is a little bit lopsided on his head. I actually don't like that, so I'm gonna undo it and try again. Okay, that's a more exact shape. And then sometimes when I have um, line lines that are going to overlap that I don't want to, I don't want to mess up the other lines. I'll add a new layer. and then draw over that new layer. I have been drawing my whole life. Um, not, not professionally, not consistently, on and off. I would, when I was younger in middle school, um, I would be in the after, after school program. My mom wouldn't be able to pick me up until later. So I sat there going through my textbooks and just drawing whatever I found in them. One of my favorite ones to draw was um, I had an ancient Egypt textbook and I would just sit there and I'd draw all of the um, ancient Egyptian gods and pharaohs and all of the really fantastical um, items that they would make out of gold. Huh? You didn't like that one. No, I will, I will draw and redraw the same shape over and over until I feel like it's right and then I'll still look back at it and think, nope. This could be fixed. And then I, I always, I am a mess with my layers when I'm drawing. I always forget what layer something is on that I need to get to. And I just realized I accidentally overlapped these two shapes here. So I have to like carefully erase this one without ruining the line art on the nose. And I normally like to draw with an art glove because it makes it so my hand doesn't stick to the yeah. screen, but I forgot it. And I also, um, I have a special screen uh, protector on my screen that makes it feel more like paper. Oh, okay. Teddy Ears is really easy to draw, I think. And so here, I like to cheat a little. Instead of manually coloring in the eye, I'm just gonna drop that. Oh, nope, that didn't work. I'm going to drop and hold it and decrease the threshold so it doesn't go outside of the lines. Drawing has always been my therapy. Um, it was always something that I could just pick up with any kind of material. I would grab whatever pencil or paper I had and just sit there, lock myself in my room and draw. Um, and it, it just so, it's very relaxing. It's more relaxing to me than any kind of, um, any other kind of therapy that other people might try. One other thing was vi always video games. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I had to share my consoles with my brothers. So while they played video games, I would sit there and I would draw what was on the video games. And I found that that was also a fun way to still enjoy the same games that my brothers were playing while also doing something myself. What's your favorite video game? My favorite video game of all time. That's really hard. Um, if I try to pick something older, I would have to say, um, I think it might be funny. It would be Pokemon Stadium on the Nintendo 64. That was something that I actually could play with my brothers. So 
we would just sit there and we would we would make teams of the coolest Pokemon and just battle each other for hours. Um, and when we weren't doing that, we would go into the um, festival in Pokemon Stadium and play all of the mini games. I was so good at the Sandshrew game where you just dig as a Sandshrew. Yeah. Um, my brother was really good at the ring toss game with, um, what was the snake? Oh my gosh. I'm worried that my lines aren't thick enough. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna combine my lines before I start painting, just so I can edit them all at once. And I realize that this arm here is not correct. So this shouldn't be connected here. This needs to be, it needs to go in like a little, a little bit so he looks like he's bending his arm rather than having a one piece of arm in front of him. Okay. Oops, there we go. I think my favorite part about drawing on the iPad is how easy it is to use touch controls to just kind of undo or redo something when I mess up. I like drawing typical video game art, but in a cutesy style. So one of my art pieces that kind of did really well was my Lisa Frank Halo combination art piece um, where I combined two of my, and I'm sure every, every girl my age, their favorite things when we were growing up was Lisa Frank and Halo. Um, and I just combined those into one piece to make a really colorful Master Chief with a rainbow halo behind him. That's pretty cool. It was really fun to draw and very different, I think, and that's why in the space it kind of blew up a little bit because you don't see those kinds of girly aspects in something like Halo or Call of Duty or um, Battlefield, I think, was the game that I also played. Okay, um, I don't like the shape of this Teddy Ursa very much. He seems a little wonky, so... I'm gonna warp him until I like what he looks like. Because if I try to warp him later on, it's gonna look a little weird with the shading. That shape looks a little bit better to me. Ah. And then probably start shading here. Oh wait, it looks a little weird. Sometimes I'll just sit here and warp the same image forever until I get the shape that I really want. One of my go-to colors to shade with is this like purplish pink color because it makes a really pretty shadow. So it's kind of my go-to uh, whenever, whenever I'm adding any kind of shade. And then from here, I think that I want the, I want the sunlight to come from this direction. So I'm going to try to imagine where the shadows would be there. I'll so probably be here. And here. And then I'm gonna create a clipping mask so I'm not drawing onto the rest of the, the drawing and increase my brush size. This whole area is gonna be shaded for sure. Where did I say the Okay, so if the sun's coming from there, yeah, that makes, that makes the most sense. Okay, I'm creating, okay, so that's the main shading 
that's gonna be the harsher shade. I'm not gonna increase the blur or anything from it, um, but I do wanna also add a secondary shade to add more depth. So, I'm gonna start with a smaller brush size, and then what I'm gonna do is after I get this shading done, I'm going to blur it. Then I might wanna change the color, just so there's some contrast to them. And then I'm gonna add a color dodge. And color dodging is a great way to add light. I learned that from one of my favorite artists um, who is obsessed with color dodging. And I now understand why it's such a cool part of any art piece, because you're adding light wherever you want. I'm gonna put the color dodge below the, the shadow, I think. Yeah, and then adjust the color of Teddy Ursa. I think that, that makes them more colorful. And then for the eyes, I like making cute little hearts. So there's a cute little heart-eyed Teddy Ursa. And I know that um, in, this, in this reference that I'm looking at, he doesn't have any colors on his eyes, he just has black eyes. But I think I wanna add some kind of a color in his eyes with a luminance brush. So it looks like he's looking at um, like a ring light or something. I think that now all I should add is the, the little details, the little light details um, with another color dodge layer on top of everything. So these will be like the final features of it. Might want to change it to a different color to make it more saturated. Nope. I think the white looks better. Okay. I think I just, I finished. <laughs> this is it. This is Teddy Ursa. Completed. And cute little Teddy Ursa. That's how you draw Teddy Ursa. Thank you so much for watching. My art's gonna be auctioned off in the silent auction. Um, so once again, follow the link below to take one of my art pieces home. Thanks for your support and stay tuned for the rest of the post chalk block stream a -thon. Very cool stuff from Kales there. I do wanna thank all of you watching right now. We appreciate your donations and support. And speaking of those folks you are supporting, I wanna check out Ella's story. Hey everyone, it's Mike Mulligan, and I am here to welcome you to the virtual Chalk Walk Streamathon trivia game. We invite you to play along as we present a wacky trivia competition themed around Chalk's hometown of Orange County. In between segments, we've been asking fun filled questions, and you're given 10 seconds to hopefully select the right answer. Your answers are tracked, and your scores tabulated with each question. The player with the most points by the end of our game will be awarded a really nifty prize. 
In the case of a tie, a random winner will be chosen between the top participants. All questions will be answered through the quizkit.io Twitch plugin. Questions appear right down here, and remember you only have 10 seconds to answer, so choose wisely. We're assuming you too are big fans of chalk and Orange County, so get those fingers ready to select the right answer. Okay, so this question could actually seal your fate, so choose your answer wisely. You only have 10 seconds to go. Here we are. Seal Beach is named for A, seals, the animals, B, navy seals, C, seals like in pipes and fluids, D, seal the singer. I know you're fishing for that answer. It's a slippery question. But if you chose A, then you've sealed in the correct answer. <sighs> oh, that's got to be the sealiest thing I've ever heard. Or, or, or. Yeah, all right. Well, stay tuned for our next round of questions and your chance to win that prize. See you back here in a few. I am so grateful to be able to walk virtually for the ninth year of Hudson Can't Cancer Free. Thank you all that the Chalk Hospital has done for him, the nurses, the doctors. Dr. Rubin, you're so, so special to this young man. Certainly, we wouldn't have had the results without you guys, and we appreciate all of it from the very beginning. Never lost hope. Thank you much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tiffany Shotgun, and I love working at Chalk because of the culture of teamwork. No matter where I float to in the hospital, everyone's always willing to help out. And you can tell that everyone really cares about the patients and their families. Hi, I'm Maddie Boyle. Since 2016, I've walked for Chalk because Chalk saved my life. We walk for Chalk, where our son Carter was treated for leukemia. We love to give back to the hospital and all the amazing doctors, nurses, and staff there. We love you all. We're the Tungaloas, and we're a Grateful Chalk family. We would like to thank the healthcare heroes of Chalk for all that you do for kids in our community. We see you. And we appreciate you. Mahalo nui loa. Faftar teli lava. Thank you very much. Can you make sure your skin has been really excited for this year's Chalk Walk? even though the impact of COVID-19 has changed it to a virtual walk. Our team still feels compelled to walk for many reasons. We walk to celebrate Hudson's journey through cancer. We walk to thank the doctors, nurses, and child life specialists. I walk so kids can be healthy. I walk because I can. I walk for people who can't help themselves. We are very grateful to be part of Team HHK and Chalk Walk. We walk for Chalk because they saved our friends. We walk to celebrate our friend Hudson's cancer journey and to raise funds for our local children's hospital. Hey everybody, it's Mike Mulligan and I am here to welcome you back to the virtual Chalk Walk Streamathon trivia game. We invite you to play along as we present a wacky trivia competition themed around Chalk's hometown of Orange County. In between segments, we're asking fun-filled questions, and you'll be given 10 seconds to hopefully select the right answer. Your answers will be tracked and the scores tabulated with each question. The player with the most points by the end of your game will be awarded a really awesome prize. In the case of a tie, a random winner will be chosen between the top participants. All questions will be answered through the quizkit.io Twitch plugin. Questions appear right down here, and remember, you only have 10 seconds to answer, so choose wisely. We're assuming you two are big fans of Chalk and Orange County, so get those fingers ready with the right answer. Here's the question. Which one of these is not a real activity on Orange County beaches? A. Boogie boarding, B. Surfing, C. Volleyball, or D. Watching the submarine races? Looking for answers. Ahoy! 
not the answer we'd be looking for. If you answer D, you are correct. Submarine races are not a thing. I mean, how would anyone see a submarine race with all the servers out there? <laughs> Brawl. <laughs> oh, well, please stay around next time, and you will get your chance to win that prize. See you in a few. She was four years old. I decided to take her to a park. She was climbing, climbing. I was taking lots of pictures. And she comes over. It's starting to get cold, so I started to rub her arms. And she had a mass. So I'm looking for a, a bug bite, and uh, I call the pediatrician's office. It's now, you know, 4.45. It closes at 5, and they said, you know, come right over. And pretty much by about 10.30 the next day, we were being sent over to Dr. McMichaels, who was actually the one that ended up giving us the news that it was, in fact, more serious than we originally thought. The first word that I remember was uh, aggressive. It took a few days for us to understand what we were in for. She went through 14 rounds of chemo, and she was supposed to go through six rounds before her transplant. She had to be five in order to have her fibula transplanted into her arm. Her counts had to be up. Our oncology team had to clear her prep beforehand, prep yeah. after. When you think about that hospital and the way that they handled us is really the epitome of who they are. They expected her to survive and they expected us to survive. You know, it was life over limb and they said, you know, prepare for her to be left-handed. She most likely will never use that hand again. We go up to the ICU and she squeezes our hand with her right hand. Sprouts really was introduced once Ella had the feeding tube and we were really being pushed in different directions for Ewing sarcoma and what she needed. We were learning about the fundamentals of nutrition. And you know, you're thrown into the feeding tube and it's scary. You're so focused on food because they won't eat. And you're trying to ask questions to other moms, but we're all surviving. And so I took a few things on, went into Sprouts, and I walked in there, and the woman behind the counter, who was a caterer, a chef, a mother, 10 minutes later, she knows my life story, you know, and she goes, okay, I'm gonna walk you through it. And I didn't buy everything that day, but I left with notes. Educated, empowered, and I needed that at that time, and it was important to me. Our goal at Sprouts every day is to take care of our customers and make sure that they have a great experience. Sprouts does a wonderful job of trying to be involved in their communities, and it makes me very proud to work for a company that this is just one more example of the things that we do. Um, we do a lot of little things in each and every town, every little city but this is one of the bigger ones that um, we all get to participate in. What I say about the chalk walk is it reflects exactly what we were doing in the hospital. And I mean, she really, she taught herself how to walk about seven times. And that is exactly what chalk walk is. It's one foot in front of the other, and it's looking around at other people's journeys. Being on the oncology floor, they would get us out, and Ella could only make it to the ice machine. Say, okay, well, let's make it around the corner the next time. Okay, let's do half a lap. Let's do a whole lap. And now we're at chalk, doing the chalk walk, walking the whole path. When it started with just make it to the ice machine. I really want to make sure that no matter how big it grows, uh, that the families are always the focus in the center. As a parent, as a Sprouts team member, and also as a human, it was a very humbling experience to come in and walk and just say, wow, is this something that we can be a part of? And for us to be able to do that was just a great partnership all around. 
we're just really lucky and fortunate to have such a unique, special partnership with organizations like Sprouts to actually create this monumental fundraiser and event that celebrates children here in Orange County in Southern California. You look around and realize everyone is surviving for someone. It makes you just hold your husband's hand tighter. Be okay if your daughter is complaining her legs are tired, throw up on your shoulders. It puts everything into perspective. Welcome back, everybody. Love getting to see some insight and hear all about Ella and her story. Going to remind you guys once again, we've got that silent auction going on over at auctions.gamersforchuck.org. Don't miss out on all of those awesome auction items, so make sure to head over there and check that out. But now we've got some action for you guys. We've got our Tetris Tournament Finals. Let's check it out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for a Champions League grudge match. I've got Edgar from Chalk, and then Connie Kins from Esports Arena. All right, both players are ready. Let's get into the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to get into the action. Edgar from Chalk, Connie Kins from Esports Arena. Let's get into the fun. Good early start here from Connie. Conservative as Edgar looking to knock out his first line, and he is on a roll. Straight piece there. Meanwhile, Connie building a stack. He's looking for an early Tetris here. Let's see if he can get it. That's going to make things a little difficult, but we'll knock out a line there. Connie, bit of a solid recovery here, starting to build up. These players just need to survive as long as they can. Great work there from Connie, getting things rolling. Couple of lines in a row. Meanwhile, over on Edgar's side, bit of a struggle here. He's Trying to get things rolling here. Has gotten stuck a little bit. Looking for a couple of straight pieces here to get things rolling. There's a couple of lines there for Edgar. Meanwhile, Connie keeping things really clean on his side. Very well-placed pieces here as Edgar starting to get himself in trouble. Does get a straight piece that he needed. But looking for a little more. Could be in trouble. Trying to rotate some of those pieces. Meanwhile, Connie really far ahead here. Just stacking pieces like crazy. Edgar's in trouble. It all may go awry right now. Connie holding on way far ahead. Big trouble for Edgar here. Needs a quick recovery, but it may be too little too late. And that is probably going to be it. That is the game. Connie is going to take it. Well played game there from Connie Kin, surviving a minute and a half. All right, Connie Kin's taking game one. We're going to get right into our second game here. Connie Kin's with the lead. Edgar going to need a bit of a recovery. Game one was a little rough for him, but. An opportunity to get things rolling this time around. Another great start from Edgar with that mid-game. It kind of went awry for him the first time around. Great work here, though, early. Getting a combo going. Some well-placed straight pieces. Meanwhile, Connikin's going for that Tetris if he can find it. But needs a little bit of peace luck here. Backing up that left side, just looking for his next straight piece. Still in the middle here, knock out a few rows. That's not gonna do him any favors, but there's a straight piece he needed, and there he goes. That's the triple he was looking for. Meanwhile, Edgar looking a lot stronger this time around. 
trying to knock out some of those lines. But Connie holding strong here. Needs to knock out two more rows to get access to a possible Tetris here. He just is going to need a straight piece after knocking out a few rows here. There's one. Good work from Connie. Edgar holding on a lot stronger than the last time around. Much better performance this time. Connie keeping a great pace here though, not giving Edgar any room to breathe this time. Connie getting close to getting access to that Tetris. Good combo there. Connie still with the lead, but Edgar looking much stronger in his second performance. Connie continuing to knock out lines. Edgar getting things rolling. There is going to be one line there looking for a second. That's a straight piece he was looking for. Needs to complete those rows. But he's starting to run out of space here. Things getting a little close for Edgar. Straight piece trying to lay it down in the middle. Gets it up straight. Oh no, it may all have gone wrong here for Edgar. Able to recover that one piece, but it may be just not enough space to get this one back. That's going to be game. Connie Kins going to take the second game in a row. Dang, Frank going out in three seconds. You were you were all hyping us up back there. Oh, I got 15,000 points. You're going out in three seconds. What's going on? Oh, that's what I had to do. Oh, oh okay. You had to do it. Sure. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know that I believe that story, Frank. You're just selling me a bill of goods right now. All right, into our possible final match here. It is a best three out of five. And if Connie Kins can take this, it will be the win for Esports Arena. Edgar for tr Chalk trying to have a recovery. Had a better second game. But still, things got a bit out of control late in that one, and it ended swiftly. Connie with a solid start here, though. Getting things rolling, trying to set up. Possible early Tetris. Meanwhile, Edgar. There we go. Couple lines in a row. Great recovery there from Edgar. Getting things rolling here. Great start here. Meanwhile, Connie. Stacking up real tall, setting up some great possibilities, but going to have to get things rolling sooner rather than later. Able to complete that row. Has to recover. Great game from Edgar here. Is currently leading as Connie getting himself in a bit of trouble here. Oh, but there's the Tetris he needed. Great job from Connie there. Another straight piece. Doesn't elect to go for the Tetris. Interesting choice there from Connie. Looking to continue to stack things up. Meanwhile, Edgar getting the combo. Keeping things rolling. Great momentum from Edgar here. Meanwhile, Connie is finally able to get that Tetris. Now looking to keep the momentum going. Good quad there. Oh, beautiful from Edgar. Much better game this time around. Connie Kins in trouble. He's stacked near to the top. Could he go down here? Edgar maybe getting a wind under his belt. He's got plenty of room to work with. All he has to do is stall for time. Connie Kins going to run out. That's going to be Edgar taking game three. Uh, my main game is League of Legends, um, but I'm currently hosting um, our Apex Legends uh, series. I host that, as well as our Microsoft Sundays, uh, which we do Halo. Okay, into game four. Edgar was able to get things rolling in game number three and is back in this series. It's still a two to one lead for Connie Kins. Edgar from Chalk. Back in the match this time around. We'll see he had a strong start to game three and was just able to outlast Connie when things went awry. But it's a great early start for Connie Kins here. 
Getting some of those straight pieces starting to stack up. Meanwhile, Edgar getting things rolling. Couple of good early lines here. Look for that straight piece, there it is. That's gonna be a double there for Edgar. Meanwhile, Connie kind of fumbling that T piece, but able to get a quick row afterwards. And all is not lost here. Looking to get access to those lower rows. Meanwhile, Edgar just playing a really clean game so far. He needs to tie things up here to force a deciding fifth match. Meanwhile, Connie, he can take this one. He'll take the win for Esports Arena. Connie able to get a good row there, looking for a straight piece to complete a double. Could possibly set up a triple here. He can get some good pieces, but Edgar still holding strong. Big lead for him. A lot of space to work with here. Connikin's just hoping he needs that straight piece. It's coming close. There's a good double. There's the straight pieces coming. Able to hit the four block. Starting to stack them up. Another row there for Connikin. Edgar. Meanwhile, still holding strong. Still a bit of a lead. Ooh, blunder though with that straight piece. Blocks off a large portion. But able to recover. Gets the rows. There it is. Beautiful recovery from Edgar there. And he, how, now he's in the lead. Connikins starting to stack them up. Pieces coming faster and faster. Straight piece there. Able to get a row there for Connikin. Would be in trouble here. Able to swap out Edgar. Keeping things rolling. Looking really clean. First two games didn't go his way, but he has looked strong in the next two. Connikins trying to swap these pieces. Gets a couple of rows in a row. Good combo from Connie. Looking to stack up, looking for those straight pieces to fill out these rows. It's close. Oh, bit of a blunder there for Connie. Blocks off a good chunk there, but able to get a row and starting to recover here. Needs to get things rolling once again. Is it still Edgar with the lead? Ooh, straight piece. Able to complete a row there. Good job from Connie. Meanwhile, Edgar just playing clean Tetris right now. Row after row going in his favor, able to swap out those pieces. There's a combo from Edgar. I want to get another row there. Meanwhile, Connie can stacking up real high for the Esports Arena representative. He could be in trouble here as Edgar looking really comfortable. He's really come on in these third and fourth games and should grab number four, looking to force a deciding game five. Connie's in trouble. He's sweating. The pieces are coming, but there's not a lot of space for him to work with. He's just trying to fit them all in here, holding on for as long as he can. It's coming down to the wire. Edgar, real comfortable right now. Connie's in trouble, and that's Edgar taking game four and forcing the decider. What's up, Sam? <laughs> All right, we are in the final deciding match. It is 2 2. After four games, and the winner of this one will take it all. Edgar from Chalk, Connikin from Esports Arena. It all comes down to this. Great start here from both players. A couple of early rows from each of them. Connikin had a great start to this series, but has stumbled in our previous two games, allowing Edgar back into this one despite being down 2-0. Early on, great start from Edgar, getting some solid rows going early. Connikin's the same. You've seen Connie throughout this series trying to stack up and set up for those early Tetris, but it has not necessarily worked in his favor. The last couple of games, he just hasn't gotten the piece luck that he needed to get those rolling. He's starting to stack up early. Edgar with a great lead right now. Last game, we went over three minutes. This one may end a little bit sooner. The way things are going for Connie Edgar, just calm and collected, getting row after row here. That's two in a row, keeping things rolling. Great work from the chalk representative here. It's Connie has that Tetris setup. Now he just needs a straight piece. It should be close. That's going to be the Tetris. Great work there from Connie. Meanwhile, Edgar just playing slow and steady. Things working well, keeping those blocks real low. 
so much room to work with here for Edgar. Connie, though, great recovery after getting that Tetris, starting to get things rolling. He's got a shot here in this fifth game. It's 2-2 in this series. Winner take all right now. Connie, he's just starting to speed up, but he's looking like he's settled in to this series. He may have finally recovered from those rough third and fourth games. Edgar, though, keeping things really clean. Plenty of space to work with here as he's just down to this bottom row. He's playing so cleanly here as Connie starting to stack up pieces, may get in trouble here soon. Edgar just looking really strong right now. Connie could be in trouble. He's just starting to stack up. He's looking for that straight piece. That's gonna get him a row. Looking for another here, looking for an L or a straight piece. As Edgar keeps it rolling, good tuck there at the last moment with that piece. Oh, bit of a misstep there, but able to recover at the end. Good job there from Edgar. Meanwhile, Connie just trying to stack him up. He is going to get a row there, but puts himself in a bit of a tough position with that L shape piece. But Edgar's starting to stack up here as well. Things could get real dangerous real fast. Edgar needed to go for that Tetris, but wasn't able to get access to that side. Meanwhile, Connie with a great recovery now in the lead. Could be big trouble here for Edgar. Uh-oh, starting to stack up near the top. This could be it. Connie Kins with the first two games stumbled in games three and four, but he may have it here. Edgar stacked to the top. That might be it. I think that's going to be game over. Yes, Connie Kins from Esports Arena takes the win three to two. Yes, Connie. <laughs> That was crazy. I threw, I threw for the content, yay, so. Sure you did. I sure did. you did. Sure you I did. Mean, no, I mean, I mean like, like we're an eSports company. It's yeah! Like, Connie Kids! eSports Arena! Who would have thought? I'm the champion of the Champions League. Um, <laughs> no, GG's, Edgar. That was sick. Right, that was good. That was great. <laughs>what an exciting final we got to watch there connie kins taking the win over edgar was a very fun match to follow hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as i did crazy show today here we got to watch all kinds of great things got to hear from some great chalk kids check out what's going on with champions league and series e and got to share all of that with you folks at home we appreciate all of your support your donations. It's been fantastic to be here with you all today. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did here. That's going to do it for the post chalk walk streamathon presented by Esports Arena. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time.